Ever since I remember, I looked up to the stars, you know. One fact fascinated me the most, that all the atoms in our body came from the stars that exploded. And the moment of the explosion, all the elements that were created in the heart of the star spread across space, ending up created stars and planets. These elements are everything you see around you, including ourselves. I'm going to start with a short story. I lived in London for 15 years of my life. Just after my studies in the UK back in the 90s, while I was working at Virgin, I came up with a business idea. So I pitched that to my manager. He said, no, go sit down. So I went above him. I went to his manager. So I tried again. He said, no, again. So I went even above him. So I ended up knocking doors at the highest level within the Virgin Group, and eventually I was sent to pitch at the house. Richard Branson's house at Holland Park. So with the legs shaking, at the age of 27, I went there and tried my luck. I finished my presentation, and I was asked, how much do you want? So I took a deep breath, and I mumbled the high seven-figure amount that I had in mind. And he said, no, I'll give you double. So that moment, I became founder and CTO of Virgin Business. The company was launched in 1999 with Richard Branson, as a one-stop shop for small businesses to get online, at a time when the internet was still somewhat exotic. We helped thousands of businesses discover the web as a marketplace. So we found ourselves at the height of the dot-com era amongst the likes of Amazon, Google, eBay, being listed as heroes of the era, having played an important role in transforming the young version of the internet into what we know today. Three years later, the company was sold with a major return, dozens of, of times the original investment. And that story transformed my life and mindset. A click that if you truly believe in yourself, you must persist, and one day you will succeed. Who would have thought back in the 90s that we would have the internet so integral in our lives? The internet revolution has happened, and today we cannot imagine life without the internet. Fast forward to today, the new upcoming revolution is space, and it will come into our lives the same way the internet did. And here I am today, after 15 years home, applying my strengths and experiences from my, from my years, 15 years in London, in founding CSEO, with one vision, to set a high goal that would inspire and galvanize our talented people into areas previously unattainable for Cyprus. Once again driven with the same persistence that defined my past, we set to prove first to ourselves what we can achieve on an island where the notion of space research was outrageous. We started by inspiring the younger generation towards building a brighter future. And the results started to arrive. In May 2014, 
our research team, Marsens, was invited to present a research paper at Space Ops, the foremost space research summit in the world. Thus making Cyprus one of 21 countries with research at this high level. After their presentation, our team was approached by the organizers. And they said to the team, tomorrow dress smartly and sit at the front. And so they did. Their paper was shortlisted in the world's top four student research papers. What happened next when we returned back to Cyprus? You can imagine. And this set an example. And the next year, another team, Arachnopia this time, wins the best mission concept of the International NASA Space Apps Challenge with a robotic astronaut's assistant for the International Space Station. So we are off in two weeks' time from today, invited by NASA to go to Cape Canaveral to meet with them. But this talk is not a story about the past, but a story about the future. People always ask me, why space? Why waste our money up there? Haven't we got enough problems to solve down here? And I smile. Space exploration is not an end to itself. By reaching out to space, we bring solutions to everyday life, solutions all around us providing myriads of benefits to our quality of life here on Earth, but above all, feeding humanity's thirst for discoveries. We are born as explorers. It's in our DNA. That's what separates us from other apes. We envision and we go and do. If all those explorers and inventors were held back with everyday problems, we will, still back, we will still be in the caves. From our ancestors colonizing the ancient world, to Christopher Columbus, and beyond, humanity has always been pushing for the next frontier. So what's coming next? Mars, the red planet. Over 50 missions were sent to Mars since 1960. In the next few years, we will see the beginnings of a Mars base and the first human on Mars, extending with greenhouses, aiming to slowly create a self-sustaining colony on Mars in the safety of an artificial protecting environment. But the ultimate goal is to transform Mars, releasing oxygen and turning its atmosphere into more like Earth's from humans first setting foot in the next 10 to 20 years on Mars, many, many years in the future into an Earth-like planet on Mars, to turn Mars from this to this. Terraforming Mars from a red planet step by step into a blue world. In essence, a second Earth because if our species is to survive, expand outwards into space, we must. The race is on again, and all space agencies have their eyes set on Mars. Getting there, though, requires humanity transforming our technologies here on Earth. Once again, space exploration will be bringing technologies back here, home. Meanwhile, here, at home, space is increasingly being commercialized. The world's first spaceport opened four years ago at New Mexico. And in the next few years, paying tourists can enjoy a ride into space. Experiencing the weightlessness of zero-G. And over 640 people have already reserved their tickets for tourism into space. The next step, talking to the space hotel. A number of companies have already 
started planning hotels in space with experiences like this, expanding into larger commercial space facilities with regular flights from Earth. And down on Earth, hybrid space planes like the LabCat, which is even bigger than the Airbus A380, could soon reduce the journey of London to Sydney down to a mere three and a half hours. Looking deeper in the future, a futuristic and technological daring project, the space elevator, with a base rooted onto Earth and extending all the way into orbit, connecting Earth with a space base that could one day, far into the future, look like this. And how about the moon? We haven't been to the moon since the 70s. It will once again become a center of attention. Man will set foot on the moon again, most likely sooner than we will set foot on Mars. The World Space Agencies are already talking about moon bases and moon villages in the foreseeable future. Another goal for the next couple of decades is to divert and grab asteroids in order to harvest their precious minerals, turning asteroids into mining facilities where space cruisers can be built with these materials. And these star cruisers could propel humanity even deeper into space, onwards to the nearest stars, into the far, far future. But I'm leaving for last the big question that always puzzled humanity. Are we alone in the universe? Europa is one of Jupiter's largest moons. It's covered with a nice layer of 100 kilometers thick. It's slightly smaller than our moon, with temperatures as low as minus 220 degrees Celsius. But under that thick layer of ice, there's a massive ocean of liquid water that holds three times as much water as all the oceans on our planet Earth. It is the nearest and most likely place where, where we may find alien life near us. Since I was a child, I was dreaming of the time of that day that Europa could be explored. The first mission to Europa has been announced. It is aimed to launch in the next decade. And I am thrilled to announce that CSEO will be part of this mission. A mission that may find alien life in the universe for the first time, answering humanity's centuries-old question, are we alone in the universe? Had we not been to Venus, we wouldn't have known about Earth's ozone problem and solve it as we did. Had we not gone into space, we wouldn't have solar panels that held down here towards a sustainable green future. Space will continue to feed our hunger, literal and metaphorical. New food sources, new challenges, feeding our never-ending need for knowledge. No matter how far it seems, no matter which country you are in, how small, how big, we started, we are in, here in Cyprus, with a population of less than one million. We ignore those who said space. Why? And our determination got us through the doorstep of NASA and the forefront of space exploration. We are already living the dream with successes exceeding our wildest expectations, reaching to the stars. When you look up, to the skies. The cosmos looks the same no matter where you are. Whether you're a parent spreading this message to your children, whether you're a researcher joining the research, a business embracing new technologies, the organization has breached the vastness of space 
down to the level where the individual has the opportunity to participate in space activities globally. In space programs from all over the world, from the simplest outreach to education, entrepreneurship, research and development, all the way to active participation in actual space missions. Bring out the explorer in you. Discover how you too can be part of the future today. I invite you to join me in this quest, and all together, we can change the world as we know it. Everybody has a place in space. See you out there. Thank you.